Hola mi gente and welcome back to another video. This is Sean from We Are Investing and on this video we are going to go over three stocks that I think are a buy right now for a long-term investment or potentially a swing trade if these stocks take off faster than I think. Now these stocks in my personal opinion are undervalued and there is huge growth potential and there's things going on that just goes to show that they are in extreme demand. Now just be aware that there is a community for this channel. We have a Patreon that gives you access to a Discord server of over 400 members where we talk stocks on the daily. You also get to follow the portfolio and sometimes you even get early access to videos. A link to the Patreon is down below. It's a community of many investors where we grow from each other and learn from each other. Now the format of this video will be as follows. Numero uno, we are going to talk about the macroeconomics and why I think it makes sense as a long-term investment. Numero dos, we are going to talk about the risk here because we need to talk about the good and the bad when we are considering companies as investments. Numero tres, we are going to talk about the stock criteria. What I'm looking for in these stocks to make them investments in my portfolio. And then numero cuatro, we are going to talk about the stocks themselves and we are going to take a look at valuation. And then that will be the entire video. And by then, hopefully you can see the potential that I see in these three stocks that I am classifying as a top stock to buy now. Now these companies are involved in a product that has such high demand right now that there's actually a shortage that's impacting multiple sectors. We are talking about semiconductors, chips. Chips are used in pretty much anything electronic. It's the foundation of all electronic devices. And semiconductors are so important to the economy and national defense. They're used in airplane jets that are used for national defense, in drones. They're used in electric vehicles. They're used in normal vehicles for something as simple as power steering to something as advanced as autonomous driving. They're used in your computers, in your cell phones, in the power grid. They're used in everything electronic. And as more things become electronic and more things become connected through the internet of things, chips are going to be needed more and more. The demand in my personal opinion is just going to continue to increase year over year. And I think that is shown right now with this chip shortage. There's a shortage because demand is so high. And also we see the importance of chips right now because if there's a shortage in chips, then that shortage is going to trickle into products like vehicles. Companies like General Motor, Ford, or any vehicle manufacturer could be running into shortages, could be could be experiencing massive delays and that's going to hurt those companies. It just goes to show how important chips are and if we have a shortage in chips, we're going to have a shortage in other things as well because like I said, it's the foundation of everything electronic. So basically, if I was to ask you this fundamental question and this is the question I asked myself before researching these companies. If you have a product that has such high demand that supply can't keep up with it. However, companies in that sector, the stocks for those companies are dropping in share price because of this shortage. Is that a buying opportunity to get into a company that is making a product that has such high demand that there's a shortage for them? And if we get the supply chain fixed, we are going to sell more chips than before. And that's a good thing for these companies. That's the question that I asked myself. And I said, yes, I do want to buy into these companies. I understand that they're dipping, so I got to implement a right strategy. But long term, these companies make sense. Now, on the flip side, we need to talk about some of the risk that I see in this sector and in these investments. The first risk is how long is this chip shortage going to last and how long are these stocks going to be beaten up? Well, according to a CEO of a major chip company, Marvell, on CNBC, he said this could last for the entire year. Let's play the clip so that you can hear it for yourself. And we do see these constraints, Carl, being very pervasive 
um, for the industry. Uh, and we think this could last depending on, you know, uh, depending on if, if any segments, uh, if, all, if all segments continue to fire on all cylinders like they are, it could be tight the whole year. So that is one of the risk here is how long is this chip shortage going to last and do you buy these stocks too early on? So for me, I don't know when these stocks are going to rebound, but I don't want to miss out. I am going to dollar cost average in these stocks because overall, I think they are going to be much higher than they are today years from now, potentially even months, depending on how this works out. That's why it might be a good swing trade, but long term, I definitely see potential here. Another risk that you have to consider is, do we end up with a supply glut? I don't think so, but do these chip manufacturers make so much chips and then demand drops that there's an oversupply of chips? And then you would have to decrease the price of each chip, which would reduce margins and trickle into the bottom line and then hurt the share price as well. I don't think that's going to be the case, but that is a potential possibility here. And it is a risk associated with all of this that we need to consider. Now my stock criteria, I'm not just buying any chip company. I want chip companies that are in things that I believe in because these chips, chips are in everything, but I wanna be in companies that are making chips for things that I see future growth in as well. Now they are as follows, right? And I wanna be diversified. I want to have companies that are in electric vehicles. I want companies that are dealing with autonomous driving because I think that has huge growth potential. I want companies that are dealing with 5G, another huge growth potential. Autonomous driving and 5G are huge catalysts for the future in my personal opinion. And I want to be invested in chip companies that are dealing with those two things. I also want exposure to companies that are in the United States and could potentially see money from the federal government for foundries. Now, if you're not aware, the U.S. government or the United States of America, I should say, accounts for 47% of the chip sale, meaning that we buy 47% of the global supply of chips. However, we only manufacture 12% of them. As opposed to China, who has a five-year plan, $1.7 trillion being put into this sector through the Chinese government that is going to end up leading to 70% of the chips used in China made in China, as opposed to 47% chips in the U.S. made by the United States of America. However, this could all change. Because of this chip shortage, it is clear that we cannot rely on other countries for our semiconductors, especially since they're used in things for national defense. We cannot rely on another country for our national defense, absolutely not. And because of this chip shortage, President Joe Biden has signed an executive order to look into the supply chain of chips. And I think that we are going to open up more foundries factories for chips in U.S. soil and I want companies that are capable of opening up these foundries and receiving federal government money to grow the business that is beneficial as an investor and I think that's an avenue of growth in this sector. And then lastly, I want companies that are dealing with national defense. I want companies that make chips for things in national defense. So those are the stock criteria that I have. Now let's talk about the stocks that I think fit the stock criteria that I just listed in this video. Now the three stocks that I think are buys in this sector are Intel, Skyworks, and Texas Instruments. There are also some wild cards that we're going to throw into this video at the end, but those are the three stocks that I am most interested in this sector. Intel, because they are in computers, but also because of Mobileye, and how aggressive Mobileye is and how much I believe in Mobileye being the leader in autonomous driving. I'm very impressed with that business, which is owned by Intel. So that is one thing here. Also with Intel, it's a play on national defense. In October, one of Intel's plants won the second phase of a contract aimed at helping the US military develop advanced chip 
more quickly. And I think that they could win more contracts when it comes to chips in national defense. Intel is also a huge company, one of the biggest in this sector, and they could definitely get money from the federal government for foundries. The second stock is Skyworks. And the reason why I like Skyworks is because they are heavy in 5G. And also their supply chain isn't being hit as hard as some of these other companies. They've done a very good job in trying to keep things in house. And that is something that I like to see. If this shortage continues, Skyworks might be one of the few companies that can continue to deliver products. And that's really good for the company. And that could help with the share price as well. The third stock is Texas Instruments. And the reason why I like them is because they have a lot of plants in the United States and they could see money from the federal government to make more factories or to start producing more chips in US soil. And that is a stock that I like to see. And that is something that I am interested in and it could be a good investment long term. Now, if you take a look at this six month chart and it has all of the stocks listed, including two wild cards, which is AMD and Apple. I know you're saying Apple's not a semiconductor company, but Apple is going to start making their own chips for their own products. And that is a big factor here to consider when investing in semiconductor stocks. Apple could be a great play in this semiconductor space. And you also get all the other benefits of owning Apple stock. But if you take a look at this six month chart, you can see leading the pack is Skyworks. They had 20.29% increase. And the bottom of the pack is AMD. Over the last six months, AMD has dropped 5.19%. And if you take a look at the last month, you can see that these stocks, all of them are selling off, which could be a buying opportunity to get stocks, get exposure to this space, which I think has great macroeconomics as displayed earlier in this video. Now, over the last month, the only stock that is up is Intel because they had some bullish news. They changed their CEO and the company could be rebounding. Intel is valued the lowest of this entire group. And speaking of valuation, right now we are in a climate that is different in the stock market. Valuation didn't matter so much in 2020, but it could matter a lot in 2021. So you do not only want to buy companies that are good, but you want to buy good companies at good value. Get in at a good share price, a good valuation, and increase your potential return on investment. Valuation matters, and if you don't know how to value a company or compare it to other companies in the sector, you really need to learn, especially in the upcoming climate. Now, the valuation of all of these companies, when we stack them up against each other, now I don't care about share price. Share price does not mean a thing to me. I care about the valuation and the market cap. A stock could be a thousand dollars a share, but if they don't have many shares in the market, it doesn't make a difference. That stock would be cheap. That stock would be cheaper than a $1 stock that has a ton of shares in the market. Now, if we take a look at valuation, we can see that Skyworks is the smallest company of the group. They have the lowest market cap at 28.6 billion. The largest company is obviously Apple. They have a market cap of over $2 trillion. Now the price to earnings ratio, the trailing 12 months, the leader is Intel. They have the lowest price to earnings ratio for the trailing 12 months and also forward looking. Now the price to earnings ratio over growth or PEG, the leader in that pack is AMD because that company is growing faster than any of the other companies listed here. However, they are the most expensive when you compare it to the price to earnings ratio, the price to sales ratio, and the price to book ratio. The leader when it comes to valuation and all the multiples is Intel. The dividend yield leader is Texas Instruments. They have a dividend yield of 2.43%, but they have a very high dividend payout. I did not list that here, but it's around 75%, which is very high. Intel comes in at number two at 2.29% dividend yield. Now the average price target, and these are from analysts, and this is from tip ranks. The company with the highest upside is AMD. It has an average price target of $106, 
which is a 35.19% increase from the current share price, which is around $78. However, I will say that these analysts don't update their numbers every day. And some of these valuations could be from before the drop. And the market is changing and these analysts could change their price targets. They could bring them down if we see a climate where valuation matters more and AMD is valued a little bit higher than the rest of the pack. However, it is growing at the highest rate. So from this group of stocks, I already own Apple stock and I'm going to continue to dollar cost average in Apple stock. I have some Intel and a very little Skyworks. Intel and Skyworks, I think it's okay to nibble at the current price, dollar cost average. Texas Instruments needs to come down a little bit for me to buy into it. And if AMD starts to sell off and we get good valuation with that company, I would absolutely buy it. But right now, those are my stocks in this sector, and those are the stocks that I am going to be buying as long-term investments. So that pretty much wraps it up for the video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you were able to learn something from it. If you were, please consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, and smashing that like button. Join the community, join the Patreon, a link is down below. Join our Twitter page, our Facebook group, and there are also promotional links that get you two free stocks on Webull for up to $1,600. But you know the deal, it's been real, it's been fun, it's been real fun, and this is We Are Investing, and together we are invincible. See ya!